Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be covering three topics. One, a basic implementation of SWR. Two, how to stop the data from refreshing every time someone focuses on a page. And three, how to get fresh data when somebody updates data somewhere else in an application. Now, if you do enjoy this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to like and also comment anything you want to see about Next.js, as that's going to be a primary focus for a few weeks. So what I've done is I've created a boilerplate set of code. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use Shakra UI to create a simple box or div that holds all of the data that we're going to create today. SWR was created by the guys behind for sale and Next.js. So they all created this, this remote data fetching library. Now SWR is derived from the stale while revalidate, which is basically a way to uh, handle cache and invalidate in that cache to get new data. And SWR first returns the data from cache, then sends a fetch request to revalidate and finally comes up with the up-to-date data. So for us, that's great. That means that our Next.js apps can be so fast that you can make a change and within milliseconds, you'll get a response. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a way to use the SWR. And to do that, we need to import use SWR and we're also going to import the mutate function which we'll get to later and while I'm here I'm just going to add in some Shakra UI stuff so I can use that as we go along. So the way that SWR works is quite simple. You can think of it just like a regular fetch in the sense that you make a call to it and data is returned. In this example we want to get data from a local host that I have currently spun up that will return users. Two things we're gonna need is data and error. So SWR has this built in, so you don't actually have to worry about the error. It will return that to you if there is one. And then if there's data, it will also return that. So for here, I actually have something running on localhost 3001. And this is from a previous video that I created on a simple API with Resale using Node. And all it does is return some users and I made a slight modification that lets us save a new user. So this in theory would work, but what I want to do is actually handle the fetching of this in such a way that we can pass arguments to it and it will return a JSON every time versus returning the full data structure. So now what you can do, and a built-in feature, is use a comma here and write the word fetcher. And by default, it has one just called fetch, but we're going to create our own. And what we're going to do is we're going to call a constant fetcher. And we're going to set it equal to args. And what we're going to do then is take those arguments and fetch. So you can do that by using the arrow here and writing the word fetch dot dot args. And then response. And finally, set it to response.json. And that's what we'll get back. If we hit save here now, that's all complete. So now that we have this fetcher attached, we can actually do something with the data. If we already have these two constants here. We can actually check before we return any data inside of here, we can actually check if the data is there or if there's an error. So if you think of this from an application standpoint, what you could do in this scenario is say, if there is no data, return say a spinner and have that spinner going until the data is returned. And if there's an error, you can handle the error immediately so that a person's not just sat around trying to figure out why their screen is blank. So all you need to do is do a couple if statements. And if you write if no data, return, and then put whatever you want returned here. So I'm just gonna return the words I am loading. And if there's an error, 
we want to return there is an error. So immediately before you've even got down here, we've had a condition here that basically states we have data, we'll go in here. If there is no data, we're just going to leave it loading. If there's an error message, we're going to write there's an error. So now what we can do inside of here, using list from Chakra UI, we're going to just do an unordered list here. So to do that, you just use the word disk. We're going to map over the data and we're going to call it user because that's what they are. And then using the arrow functionality, we're going to essentially ask for each list item, we're going to return the user and their location. So for each list item, we're going to need a key and that key is going to be equal to the user.name. Then on top of that, we're then going to actually return the data inside of here, which will just be the user.name, comma, user.location. So in theory, what will happen is it will go and get this from our database and return it to us. So let's test this out first and see what happens. So we're here, we have an npm dev that we can run. So we can flip over here and you can see that um, immediately this has already been returned. And if we hit Shift F5 to get a full refresh, you can quickly see in the top left-hand corner there is I am loading. Now, what's good about this is this data is immediately fetched at the beginning. So if I hit Control R here and we see the refreshes in this side of the screen, you can see here that there is a request here and that's going to our API and we are returning the data here. And this is fantastic and this is exactly what we want. So use SWR has a feature that will grab the latest data as soon as somebody focuses back in the window. So for example, let's say a user has walked off and they've decided to make a cup of coffee. They've then come back and you now have stale data. Well, use SWR will actually just refresh as soon as somebody clicks back in to the screen. So I've actually clicked off the screen and clicked on my Streamlabs right now. And I'm gonna click back over here and say, what happens now? So I've clicked back over here and the last request is another one to the users. SWR has this feature called Revalidate on Focus. And the reason behind it is, is imagine if you went away and decided to get coffee and came back and your data was now stale, but you don't know that as the user. And the application doesn't know that either. In theory, that coupon code that was there before should be valid, but somebody else at another location has used that coupon code and now it no longer exists. Or maybe this, user right here, James, has been deleted out of the database and you wouldn't know. So what it does is it makes a fetch and compares them and makes sure that the, nothing has changed and will update this screen if it has. I've had this question a million times and that's how do I turn this off? Well, what you do is inside of your code, you can go ahead and after the fetch uh, here, you can open a set of braces and inside of that brace, you're going to put in revalidate on focus and set it to false and then hit save. Now what will happen is if we go back to our regular screen and look what happens in the network, what you'll see is that it will stop. So as you can see, if I click here now, no more requests are made. It doesn't matter if I click off and click on my OBS and come back. So now this data is stale. And that's fine. For the next example of what we're doing here, we're gonna use SWR to revalidate this after we make a different request to an API. And that's one of the features that SWR has. So what I'm gonna do here is quickly create a button. And inside of that button, we're just gonna say add user. And that add user button 
on click it's going to do something. So on click, we're going to make an asynchronous call. And that asynchronous call is going to take something and upload it to our database. And then we're going to force the screen to update. So up here, we're just going to quickly create a user. And that user is going to equal um, a name. And we're going to call him James as well. And the location is going to be somewhere else. And the location here is going to be London. So now we have this, we can use this further down here. So now we have this dummy user that we're going to add to our dummy database. So we're going to use the same fetcher as, as above that we created. And we're going to put in the same URL. And this is just going to take the post request instead of a get request, similar to other APIs you've probably seen on the internet. So we're going to take the method and we're going to say post. And then we're going to just stringify that user. So if I click this button, it will update the user and add him to our list. So I've clicked the add user and we got a 200 back. And you can see this is the request payload, London and James, but this screen didn't didn't do anything. And if I hit refresh, we can now see that this is here. But it never updated our data. And one, that's because we obviously turned off the window focus. But if I'm already focused on the window, how do I get new data out? The way that this works is there's a key that we're using every time we make a request. And that key in our example is the URL. What we can do is basically tell it, hey, we want you to update this data. I know there is new data. Please update the screen. And you would think that you'd have to make a new request, and that seems like a pain. But luckily, there is an option. So after we've done this await here, what we can do is type mutate. And then we can just type in our URL. And what will happen is, is once this is complete and we've updated our database, we will call mutate and it will go and check this data and essentially revalidate it and see if it's actually new data. And if there is, it will re-render the page for us, giving us the freshest data. So I've added the mutate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change this to somebody else. So let's say Chris and hit save so that we have Chris now. Then I'm going to flip back into the Chrome window and we're going to look at it and see how this works. So right now we just have James, George, Steve and James again who lives in London. Now I'm going to click this button and it's going to update our guy and add in Chris. Then what we should see is the page actually render the new data. So I'm going to click it. And as you can see, this part didn't actually do anything. It just popped this on the bottom. And that's because it does a comparison and only gives us the new data. So back into our console, and if we refresh this, and I'm going to add Chris and it's going to add him again because I don't have any checks here. And so you can see that we do do a request and that does the payload. And immediately afterwards, we do a request to the users as a get. And in our response, we get the full thing with all the new data. And as you can see, Chris is here at the end. So in this video, we covered three topics. One, how to use SWR. Two, how to stop it from refreshing every time we focus on the page. And three, how to get fresh data once somebody makes a call to an API and we know that there is fresh data using the mutate function. Now this is going to be a series of videos, so I'm planning to cover more things using SWR and Next.js in general. So if there's something in particular that you want to see, leave a comment below. Until the next video, see ya!